What is going on guys, Bisectatron here, bringing you today's video, and we are talking about the spam attacks. I know you guys um, love using them as much as I do, and I mean that seriously. I am a, a big proponent of these so-called spam type attacks, whether it's a Yeti, Bowler Smash, Pekka Bowler Smash, Mass Dragon. These are some very creative attacks, even if they don't get the same amount of of clout maybe as a hybrid attack or something. Let's take a look at Town Hall 13, Town Hall 12, Town Hall 11, how people are, are using these types of attacks to make it easy on themselves to take out some bases, guys, because honestly, sometimes people overthink plans. It happens to me a lot. When the easiest thing to do is go back to the fundamentals, create that funnel, uh, with a warden walk is often a popular thing to do because in a spam attack like this, um, you have a lot of time typically left over if you just drop all your troops at once. So you can use some of that extra time to get a free funnel. I mean, there's no investment here. You, the warden and healers are being used anyway for this attack. Let them go for a little while, take out you know a nice deep funnel, got an air defense with that, um, wizard tower, got a ton of value from that funnel. Um, then king on the other side with the siege barracks, Coming in with the Yeti Smash, um, this is actually the opponent uh, clan attacking here. What I love about this attack is the creativity, not using a jump spell, because there's no need to jump into the base. Everything is accessible just going on this little um, uh, long compartment that runs around the entire base. All the actual defenses can be reached, minus the eagle up there, which is an important defense. You'll see how that's taken out in just a moment. There goes the royal champion. So yeah, um, everything moves through the bottom here. I believe there were some hogs in the siege barracks that came out, or maybe it was more yetis. Actually, it might have been yetis. I forget. Um, and then you're going to see here a nice back end bat bomb. Um, very cool technique here that uh, is probably underused, honestly. With all the single infernos out there, you can use the bat bomb or a bat wave much more than you would think. Drops the bats, has two freezes, gets the wizard tower and the scatter shot uh, frozen. Needs to use both of them because um, the bats did not have a rage on them, of course. Uh, but look at all those bats left up and the queen and the warden still working. A few cleanup troops were good to go for a three star. Uh, really big fan of the creativity here. It's kind of cool how that uh, Yeti tanked the wizard tower, um, which might have taken out all the bats. But. Um, the, really creative and uh, that's what it takes often at Town Hall 13 is thinking outside the box a little bit and um, let's move on to we got a couple Town Hall 12s to take a look at this war is still ongoing um, but it does not look like it's going too well for us big struggles at Town Hall 13 it's a midweek war tough to plan quite as much as as usual all right this is one of my attacks and um, once again, not your traditional spam where, you know, jump through the core of the base, go on a bit of an alternate route similar to the last attack, and that can sometimes get you a ton more value uh, by doing it this way. So the idea here is queen to take out that air defense, start a queen walk, then the battle blimp coming in just to bomb down that eagle. Now the reason I'm doing this is my queen is going to pick a direction, you know, whichever way she goes, it could have been to the top of the base, it turns out she's going to the bottom here. Used her ability early, now using a rage, so a pretty big investment there, but she's able to step up and get that multi-inferno. I don't know if you guys have been seeing this as much as I have, but at least in a lot of these competitive wars we're in, clans are starting to use less compartments and more of these wall pieces with like little gaps in them to make it hard for a super wall breaker to, to open up because in friendly wars everyone can use those super wall breakers so oftentimes instead of letting the attacker choose where they want to open a compartment you put a little opening in the compartment so the super wall breaker will just walk totally past that wall it won't even go for it and it forces the attacker to deal with that one little opening instead of getting to choose their own opening if the compartment is filled out. Anyway, Quakes to open everything up, meeting up with the uh, the bowlers and Pekkas here, Warden's ability to cover the town hall and get a couple of those bowlers in it as well. And there is a bit of a heavy back end with you know the lava pups kicking in plus all the Teslas, but the Pekkas are pretty hardy. That's why I like using Pekkas even more than Yetis typically, especially at Town Hall 12, is they seem to uh, to last a lot longer, especially without the single Infernos, which most people don't use at Town Hall 12. 
um, they can stay up longer than the Yetis typically. Uh, so they will kind of walk around, finish off the base, and we got some back end loons with a haste and a freeze. Go ahead and go times two here, just waiting for my queen and Pekkas to kind of make their way through, get a few more buildings, then I'll drop the, uh, the last little bit there, haste, loons, and the freeze to finish everything off. So once again, a little bit outside the box. I mean, they're called spam attacks, but these are, uh, you know, they're often very clever, creative attacks. And a lot of the, the beauty of them is kind of in the setup. How do you get those troops in the base? You know, are you doing a queen charge, a warden walk? Um, something that kind of, you know, flows into a, um, an all-out spam type deployment. Uh, number 17 is our next one here. This one was a, a cool attack and also using the bats, which, um, you know, you can use them in Town Hall 12 as well. We do have three multi-infernos, but there's always ways to use a bat spell if you just stare at a base long enough. That I can promise you. And in this case, it worked out very nicely here. So, setting things up with the king uh, on one side. Once again, look at all these little gaps people are putting in their compartments. Let me pause this. I might make a video on it. You know, is it worth doing or not? Uh, not everyone is in friendly wars, so they're not all facing super wall breakers. But the idea is basically, like I said, the super wall breaker for like this compartment, for example, with the town hall. If the compartment was completely covered off with a wall right here next to that one, you could target it at any of these three buildings, open up anywhere along the compartment, whatever is most convenient. Now, the only way you can open up is, I don't even know what would happen. It might target like this wall, because there's enough of a, a length of you know wall covering all of this. It might even go back and try to target one of these walls. It really depends on the wall breaker AI and, and how, how many walls qualifies as being like an obstacle versus just a little bit of a strip that it could, runs around. So there's, there's different um, ways you could look at it, but the idea is it makes it tricky because you're, you're giving the attacker the opening, but it's not the opening they necessarily want, and it's difficult to funnel troops into that specific opening um, as opposed to one they might create on their own. Anyway though, that you know makes it easier to not use a super wall breaker in this case. King of uh, the funnel one side, I think this side was funneled by something else. I kind of missed what it was, but um, everything moving through, jump spell, rage, typical stuff. All three infernos can be accessed to some extent. The bowlers can reach them at least. Going to, uh, got good value from the warden's ability. Out of the siege barracks come some hogs. So sometimes you want to use a strategic, you know, battle blimp. Sometimes a back end slammer. In this case, uses the siege barracks right with the entry point there to uh, to just add more troops to the to the mix. And then at the end, some hogs run out and kind of join the fight, help take out a multi-inferno. The eagle is very far in the back end, which can be kind of dangerous if it targets your bat spells. But in this case, there was still plenty of P.E.K.K.A.s up. Uh, there's, I think, three of them walking on the outside of the base. So the bats can kind of finish it off as it targets those P.E.K.K.A.s. Like I said, Town Hall 12, P.E.K.K.A. Smash is underrated for sure. Um, totally gets my stamp of approval to use it more because the P.E.K.K.A.s have a lot of hit points. If there's no single Infernos, it's going to be tough to kill them, especially with healers on them, with the Grand Warden's level 40 ability. Um, underused, underused, underused. I would say it gets a major upgrade in my portfolio, so to speak. Uh, use, use the P.E.K.K.A. Smash. Pair it with bats, pair it with, like I did, you know, back end loons with a, a blimp, whatever whatever sets up the attack. Um, it's kind of like puzzle pieces. You know, you have the, you have maybe the main piece, which is going to be your pack of bowler smash from whatever angle, but there's little pieces, a warden walk on the beginning, a, a blimp on either the beginning or the end, a siege barrack somewhere, a bat spell, all these different little uh, add-ons you can pair with it depending on the base. So you can be very creative with how you, um, how you do it there. Town Hall 11, you might think is not as much of a spam meta. I'd say that's true. Town Hall 12, in my opinion, is the best to be doing the P.E.K.K.A. Bowler Smash. Um, Town Hall 11, I'm, I kind of lean towards dragons a little bit. With only two Inferno Towers, um, obviously no scatter shots base a little bit smaller typically you can you can uh, use dragons on more bases than people actually do 
So I'm a big fan of this attack. I used to only use it at Town Hall 11 for a while, back when the meta was a little bit different. Now I've kind of adapted my ways, but this was a cool attack. Coming straight at an Air Sweeper, I've always been a fan of, you know, go at the Air Sweeper. If everything else is, is good, the Air Sweeper is typically not going to ruin your attack. Um, so that's the case here. Dragons, Loons, Warden, everything going through. Got a nice funnel with the King and Queen. Made sure not to lure out any potential Lava Hound. In this case, there was no Lava Hound, but you want to, you know, try to avoid doing that. Headhunters do run for the Warden, but with the Poison spell, which I might start recommending that you bring just because the headhunters can rush your warden really fast in some situations. Just kind of depends, but think about bringing a poison spell now. Um, that uh, allows the warden to save his ability. I mean, the dragons had already almost crushed the entire base, plus has that nice uh, back end freeze bat combination uh, for the Inferno Tower, Wizard Tower. So if you see a base with a multi-inferno right next to a wizard tower um, that has not like a very isolated core, sometimes people put like just the eagle in the core, which makes it hard because it's uh, difficult to path through the base and, and get good value as your dragons move through. If it has a very dense core like this, um, dragons can be a very effective attack. So I, I would qualify this as a spam attack because Really a spam attack is using um, using non-target specific troops in kind of a large number to just roll through a base. And that would be dragons, pekkas, yetis, uh, you know, falcon when people used to use that, etc. Okay, one more Town Hall 11 attack here. And um, let's see, this one is also going to be a P.E.K.K.A. Bowler Smash. I don't, um, Town Hall 11, you don't have Yetis. When would you use Yetis at Town Hall 12 and 13? Typically, I like Yetis better against single Infernos, so more Town Hall 13 oriented for sure. The idea being that the single Inferno can take out your P.E.K.K.A.s a lot more effectively, whereas the Yetis spawn the Yeti Mites, which are more difficult for the single Infernos to deal with, and also 18 troop space through you bring more of them, so in a single Inferno locking onto one of them won't cost you as much. Um, whereas a multi Inferno can take out the Yeti Mites a little bit uh, faster uh, than a single Inferno would, making the P.E.K.K.A. a better choice, which is pretty pretty good against a multi Inferno. Anyway, though, everything moving through here um, Siege Barracks to funnel one side, which got a lot of good value, even used a heal spell. To keep those hogs up there's still one or two hogs working um, they got a ton of value from that so i'm a big fan uh, of using the hog rider in the siege barracks if you also invest a heal spell and really take advantage of those max level hogs um we'll give a little hog rider sound yeah. um shout out to the hog riders doing a nice funnel there and uh and making it possible also, at Town Hall 13, you can use the Siege Barracks um, as like a funnel, and then the Hogs come out. Then you put your Royal Champion with the Hogs, timing it so as soon as the Siege Barracks breaks and the Hogs come out, you drop your Royal Champion. That can be a good way to kind of hide your Royal Champion from taking too much fire, especially if there's a single Inferno that might lock onto her, because the Hogs will run out in, in front and really tank, and then the uh, Royal Champion does her damage uh, as she's being tanked for. So that's a ton of value, especially if you put a heal spell in it at Town Hall 13. Something to think about. Anyway, this one wraps up. Very, very nice attack here. A um, little uh, round of applause for all the, uh, for all the attackers. Um, awesome stuff. This war, unfortunately, like I said, is not going to go too well for us being a midweek war. Good performance by the uh, the Poon Fighter Clan. Um, so GG to them, two hours left, but we don't have enough hits to make up that deficit. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Like I said, look to use some of these spam attacks. They get a bad rap, but they are pretty good in a lot of cases. So um, I'm definitely using them myself. Look to do the same. That'll do it. I will see you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching this video. If you enjoy my content, consider supporting the channel by entering my creator boost code, 
bisect in the settings tab of your game, and keep in mind it occasionally resets and must be re-entered. Click or tap for another video and be sure to subscribe. See you all next time, Bisectatron out.